In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. I'd like to welcome you all to our Perseverance Conversation this morning. And as always, we'd like to begin our conversation by inviting Mary to be with us. Mary is the Mother of God. Mary is the Mother of the Church. Mary is the Mother of each and every one of us. And in the Hail Holy Queen, we invoke Mary as our life, our sweetness, and our hope. Let's turn to Mary and ask her to give us special graces this day. Let's pray the prayer that she loves most, which is the Hail Mary, together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let's now turn to our spiritual director, who is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God himself. The Holy Spirit has many different titles. The Holy Spirit is the paraclete. He's also known as the gift of gifts. He's also known as the sweet guest of our soul. Holy Spirit is also known as our consoler as well as our counselor. Holy Spirit is also known as our interior master. St. Paul in his letter to the Romans reminds us with these words. He says that we don't really know how to pray as we ought. But the good news is the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit intercedes with ineffable groans ineffable groans so that we can say Abba Abba which means Daddy or Father. Let's invite the Holy Spirit to be with us to give us a lot of light in our intellect, but also let's beg him to give us a lot of light, but also the interior fire of love. A lot of light, but the interior fire of love. As we say together the classical prayer to the Holy Spirit, Faithful, by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady of Fatima, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Michael the Archangel, pray for us. St. Gabriel, pray for us. St. Raphael, pray for us. St. Maria Goretti, pray for us. 
Saint Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. Saint Maria Faustina Kowalska, pray for us. All God's angels and saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. The family that prays together stays together. We always start off our perseverance family conversation by praying together. We pray to Mary, the Mother of God. We pray to the Holy Spirit, our spiritual guide. Then we pray to the angels, St. Michael, St. Raphael, St. Gabriel. And then we pray to the saints. And as always, a note of encouragement, I promise to pray for all of you today. Pray for all of you in the greatest of all prayers. I will pray for you in the holy sacrifice of the Mass. That's right. When I celebrate my Mass this evening, I'll place all of you on the altar now, I'd like to offer these specific intentions. One intention will be that all of us today would try to be open and docile to the Holy Spirit. Our sanctification depends on our being docile to the inspirations of the Holy Spirit. We may even pray this short prayer, Come Holy Spirit, come. Come Holy Spirit, come through the heart of Mary. My second intention will be in honor of the saint that we celebrate today. Today we celebrate Saint Maria Goretti. That all of us All of us will try to imitate this wonderful saint, but let's pray in a special way for our children and our teenagers. Because she's the patron of youth and the patron of teenage girls. In a world in which we are being bombarded by so many temptations today, this young virgin martyr is a is a wake-up call and a model for our children as well as our teenagers. St. Maria Goretti will die only at 11 years of age, not even 12, giving her life to defend virtue. So I'd like to pray for your family, for your children, that through the intercession of this great saint, that they would be preserved from the deluge of, of filth that is permeating our society, that these saints would be a shield of protection over our children, over our families. I want to ask St. Maria Goretti to pray for us. My third intention, my friends, Once again, I'd like to pray for the, for the pro-life movement. That we would defend human life. Seeing human life as a gift from God. All of us are, are endowed with inalienable rights as our founding fathers taught us. And those rights are that of life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Many churches and pregnancy centers have been vandalized over the past 10 days. Let's pray for these many people that are just seething with anger and hatred in their hearts that, that through the prayers of Maria Grady the Saints that these people will be converted. That they would 
not allow themselves to be consumed by this hatred, but allow God to take possession of their lives. So my friends, let's turn and offer special prayers today as we enter into the life of an extraordinary saint that we want to get to know. So we have the book of Hosea, Psalm 105 and Matthew chapter 10 where Jesus sends out the disciples to preach the word of God. But today I'd like to, I'd like to start off by giving you a summary of the life of this saint. The life of this saint is really extraordinary. I'd like to summarize her life in um, and present a virtue that we should all strive to strive to practice and to live out. So the name of the, of the saint that we celebrate today is Saint Maria Goretti. I had the privilege of visiting where she lived and where she died when I was in Rome for seven years. It's called Nettuno on the outskirts of the city of Rome. So the name of this uh, saint is Saint Maria Goretti. She was born on October 16th. And it was the biggest number of people in the history of a canonization. There were a quarter, a quarter of a million people present at the canonization. It couldn't be done inside St. Peter's, but rather in the plaza or piazza of St. Peter. Quarter of a million people. Proclaimed to be the patron of youth as well as teenage girls. So, she was born in Italy, worked with her, her, her poor parents on a, on a farm. And one of the in interesting elements of the life of this little girl is that she never was able to go to school. because her parents were very poor and her father's going to die when she's young. She never went to school, but she learned how to work. She learned how to cook and to mend and to sweep and tend the house. And I'd like to say that uh, as a message for, for parents today is that work is very, very important for all of us. Idleness is the workshop of the devil. So in these vacation weeks or months, do not allow your children to give in to laziness. One way is just give them free use of their phone. They're going to be spending time on their phone the whole vacation.
having a big family, she would wait to eat the leftovers at the meal so that her other siblings would be well nourished. These little details in the lives of the saints are very impressive. And her mother was sometimes given discouragement because they were so poor. And she would actually console the mother by saying, Mom, don't worry. Don't be afraid. We'll improve. She said, "Is what's sufficient is that the Lord give us health. She said, divine providence, God will provide. She went on to say, we'll, we'll struggle. We'll keep struggling. This is just a little girl who's actually encouraging her mother not to give in to discouragement. Little girl encouraging her mother not to give in discouragement, but basically to trust God. Another element of life of this saint is the great purity of her life. Is she would not, she, she preferred to die rather than to hear ugly words, dirty stories. Maria Goretti said she preferred to die rather than to utter these ugly, vulgar words or stories. You can see all, already before she dies the great purity of her intention, purity of her heart, purity of her conversation, because what Jesus says, out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. Next point is that Maria Grady never, never had the opportunity in her life to go to school because of the great poverty. Now there's another parallel. The children at Fatima, Jacinta and, and Francisco, they never went to school either. Maria Goretti and her, and her brothers and sisters were educated by their parents to respect themselves and to respect each other, as well as in their responsibility 
to carry out their obligation that was given to them. It's a very important point because in the modern school system, there's a certain tendency heading towards socialism where the, the school wants to take away the obligation of the parents and the school wants to teach the children thereby marginalizing the parents from their primary obligation or responsibility. Their primary obligation, responsibility. So I'd just like to emphasize that once again, that the primary teachers, educators, of children are the parents. So the parents are very good teachers to Maria and her children. Let's pray that we be good teachers to our children also. Now Maria Goretti was able to receive communion not long before she died. Maria Grady had a great desire to receive Holy Communion. However, she couldn't read or write. Uh, she didn't have elegant clothes or shoes or a veil, nor any time free. But her neighbors helped her out, preparing for the sacrament. They were able to get the, the clothes that she needed to be able to receive her first communion. So she received her communion on the 20, 29th of May, 1902. She was 11 years old. It's interesting because back then, you might feel that that was kind of late. But back then, this is this is this is uh, more than a hundred years ago. Children would make their first communion usually when they were about twelve years of age. So she's actually precocious in that she received her communion a little bit earlier. But I see this as. I see this as providential because really she's going to die within six weeks. So I see communion was the means that God gave to her so that she could be strong in suffering martyrdom. Next point is that she suffered a lot But she would offer her sufferings to God through the Blessed Virgin Mary. That's right, she'd offer her sufferings to God through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary. One of her great sufferings is that her father died when she was very young. So Maria Garadi, when her father died, she sought consolation in prayer, but especially in praying the rosary. And this young man that's going to be living right next to Maria Garadi's family, Alessandro Serenelli, her father, he would be making...
What happened to Maria Goretti? Her father dies. She's 11 years old. She's helping out her mother. She's helping with cooking and cleaning and mending the clothes. She's called to do babysitting for her family upbringing, his parents being separated, not having a very good relationship with his mother. Alessandro Serenelli begins to, this is about a hundred years ago now, even a little bit more, he starts to read bad magazines. That's right. We call that pornography. So by reading these bad magazines, he's filling his his eyes, his mind, his memory, his heart with dirt, with impurity. His mind is being filled with dirt. So things change in his attitude toward the Goretti family, especially toward Maria. At first, Alessandro would just see Maria Goretti like a little sister. But his attitude changed the more that he would be viewing these bad magazines. So much so that he no longer looked at her like a little child, a little sister, but he looked at her with lustful intentions. And he made, he made indecent proposals to the little girl. Don't forget, she's 11 years, but she's physically, she's, she's developed. So one day, with the worst of intentions. He drags Maria Goretti into the room and he tries to force himself upon her and she resists.
So Maria Goretti knew very well the catechism. She had a very well-formed conscience. She knew the commandments, even though she couldn't read and write, because God was her teacher. Now, Alessandro, hearing her, seeing her resist, became even more furious. You might even say like a wild animal. Given that she would not give in, but was resisting forcefully, he pulled out what was an ice pick, practically a dagger, a very sharp knife. He says, if you, if, you do, if you don't give in, then I'm going to stab you. She would not give in. So Alessandro lifted up the knife and And he stabbed her three more times. Now those other those other stabs were fatal because they punctured her lungs, punctured her lungs. So Alessandro goes into another room. The baby was crying, Maria was crying for help. The mother rushes in and sees Mary, Maria lying on the ground. She says, Alessandra tried to do something very ugly with me and I said no. I resisted. So with horse and buggy, they load Maria on the cart and they rush her to the hospital. Imagine the pain she must have been suffering when the horses going over those the rough terrain, Mary Maria going up and down, how much she must have suffered just on the way to the hospital. Now, while she's in the hospital, she suffered incredibly. She wanted water, she couldn't drink it. Tried to do an operation on her without any anesthesia. Her suffering was not over. She saw an image of Mary on the wall and she was praying to the Blessed Virgin Mary, seeing how the Blessed Virgin Mary helped Maria Goretti through all the different details of her suffering and martyrdom. The story's not over. While she's there in the hospital bed, about to die. A priest comes in. And the priest asks her a question. Maria, do you forgive Alessandro for what he did to you? And Maria Grady said this, yes, 
not only do I forgive him, but I want for, I want him to be with me in heaven one day. Calling to mind the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. So Maria suffered until the very end. She dies on July July 6th, which is today, 1902. She was only 11 years of age. Now, what happened to the young man, Alessandro Serenelli. He was sentenced to a, a long prison sentence. Actually, 30 years. Thirty years in the in jail. But something happened. At first when Alessandro Serenelli was there in jail. He was unrepentant. Basically saw Maria as being being dumb. If she had just given in, she'd still be living. But something happened that would change radically the life of this young man who killed Maria Goretti when he was 18 viewing pornographic magazines something happened that God allowed to happen that would radically change his life see how good God is One day, one day when he was in prison, he had, he had a dream or a vision. This dream or the vision that he had was that of Maria Goretti. Now when he would look at her while she was alive with those lustful eyes, she was filled with fear. Because she was keenly aware of the bad intentions of Alessandro Serenelli. But now she had a vision of Alessandro, of, uh, he had a vision of Maria Goretti and she was bathed in light with a big smile on her face. And in her arms, she had a bouquet of beautiful flowers, and there were 14 of them. Remember that she was stabbed 14 times. And exactly what the conversation was, we'll find out when we get to heaven, but this was the essence of it as recounted by Alessandro later on.
Alessandra, God will forgive you. I have forgiven you. But you have to beg forgiveness. It was the, the visitation of Maria Goretti in his prison cell, bathed in glory with the 14 roses, talking to him, encouraging him to repent. So he asked, he begged for the grace of conversion and wanted to go to confession. So it was the, the local bishop that came into the jail and he went to Alessandro and he heard the confession of Alessandro Serenelli. in which he was much more humble, much more submissive, much more docile. In other words, instead of an angry, bitter, hateful young man, and as a result of that, because of his good conduct, they decided to commute his sentence and released him instead of 30 years, 27 years. Now, the whole story of Maria Goretti and Alessandro Serenelli is filled with wonderful messages for us. The first thing that Alessandro Serenelli does, and it's, he's released, uh, it's Christmas Eve. So Alessandro Serenelli, the first thing he does is that he goes to the home of the mother of Maria Goretti. Her name was uh, Assunta, which means in, in, in Italian, Our Lady the Assumption. He knocks on the door. And don't forget, this is 27 years later. He knocks on the door And Maria Goretti's mother opens up the door and he asks her, do you recognize me? Of course I do. You're Alessandro Serenelli who killed my daughter. Now, he humbly begs the mother of Maria Goretti for pardon for having killed her daughter. Think about this.
So that night, Alessandra uh, Serenelli shared a Christmas meal with the mother and the family of Maria Goretti. Serenelli, relatively young, he would have been in his mid-40s, he enters into a Franciscan monastery and becomes a Franciscan brother, which he dedicates the rest of his life to prayer, work, and penance, trying to repair for the damage he did in killing an innocent little girl. Now, as mentioned at the beginning of our talk, At the beginning of the talk is that Maria Goretti will be canonized, made a saint. This death of Maria Goretti was known basically in the whole world. So it was Pope, it was Pope Pius the Twelfth. It was in the year 1950. The reason being is because there was close to 250,000 people that came to attend the canonization of St. Maria Goretti. 250,000, which means a quarter of a million people. That's incredible. And up to, up to that point, that was the biggest number of people in the history of canonizations up to that point. would be the, the mother and the siblings of St. Maria Goretti. But also who was present there was Alessandro Serenelli, who was 66 years of age. He was present at the canonization of the little girl we had killed 48 years earlier. Saint Maria Goretti was canonized as both virgin and martyr. She protected her virginity by offering herself to be a martyr. My friends, this is one of the most extraordinary lives in the history of the saints. There are so many different lessons I think that we can glean from this.
But I think it's opportune that I highlight, I underline for ourselves, for our children, as well as for our teenagers, one salient point. One salient point, and the point would be the following. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8, is one of the eight Beatitudes. Where Jesus says, Blessed, blessed are the pure of heart. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they will see God. Right now, the young Virgin Martyr Maria Goretti is contemplating the beautiful face of God with her mother Mary in heaven. A Lady of Fatima said that most souls, most souls are lost for all eternity. Because of the sins against the sixth and ninth commandment. For sins against the virtue of, of purity. So I think it's important for us to turn to St. Maria Goretti, this virgin martyr, and beg for the grace to live out this virtue, which is very challenging today. The Catechism of the Catholic Church points out that Virtue of chastity is a virtue in which there has to be a daily, a daily conquering of oneself, so to speak. So there's two elements. First is that we have to rely we have to rely upon the grace of God. Because without God we can do nothing. Especially this is a supernatural virtue, a virtue that transcends our own natural powers. We have to rely upon God's grace. As Maria Gretti was able to receive communion. And constantly she was having recourse to Mother Mary. But then we also have to do our part. So the grace of God is always sufficient. The grace of God is always sufficient. However, it's incumbent upon us that we have to do our part. It's a two-way street. God's abundant grace. And we corresponding with God's abundant grace. So I invite you to share, to share this video, share this conversation with your friends, maybe to your, share this with your teenagers sometime tonight. Share. Share our Perseverance family conversation. It's free of charge. Let's beg this great saint to be able to live out that beautiful beatitude, Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they will see God. The Lord be with you. 
May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.